Right, we're with Colin at CB Electronics now. Uh, Colin, so you've taken the sort of uh, the inner workings of your X-Patch system and you managed to cram them into some Eurorack modules. That was, well, I got a request from a customer who was using the X-Patch. Yep. And wanted to say, can you do something so I can use it inside the Eurorack? And I looked at it and thought, well, that was about a year ago, in fact. I thought, well, I could. Um, and then I started designing it and found well, you needed the processor, you needed the X-Patch. It was getting expensive mm -hmm. because you needed two modules. So why not design it so it could control more than two modules? You know, right. I could do, and especially as I want to do a 16 by 16 and then combine two to make a 32 by 32. So that was the idea. Uh, and I started by making just the three modules. And I, so the, the processor, the patch bay itself, which is the 16 by 16. And as I said, you can combine two to make a 32 yep. by 32. Unfortunately, it's three times the price, not twice the price, because it's square law. And then a gain module, so there's eight channels of gain plus a sum. And, then, and obviously the CPU to control it. And to make the CPU have some value itself, it has trigger inputs. Or trigger inputs and outputs effectively. So, yep. and you can simulate the output by pushing the push button next to the socket. Uh, USB and, US and, and serial MIDI, 5 pin MIDI effectively, and network MIDI. So it gives it lots of communication. So, every, so it gives you event inputs to MIDI or MIDI to event input right. and to output. It works with the same software as we use for the studio version. Uh, and you can actually control both the Studio One and this one at the same time right, using okay. the same software. It's, that seemed important to me. So, and the rack also, on this setup I have the new, our new mic amp module, which is in prototype at the moment. Yep. Which is a FET input mic amp with relay control gain, um, low pass, high pass filter and phase. And phase with envelope follower and gate signals. This is the breakpoint. So in this setup, it's going out into the gain section, coming out of the gain section, back into the uh, X patch, and then back in and coming out of the outputs, line outputs, which are driving my headphones. The mono output is another input. So on the software over here, you can see what's happening. So I have a sequence programmed up. Yeah. So if I select the first item in the sequence by pressing this button, you can see it's changed to a stereo input there. I see, yeah. You select the next item in the sequence, it's gone to mono. Next item, it's gone to mono left. Next input, it's gone to mono right. And then it goes back to stereo. And it can also control the gain. So it's controlling all these modules, switching, changing the gain on this module changing the gain in here. Yeah. All done. Could be a keyboard, could be a foot switch. Could be anything that would just... All without moving any cables. No cables are moving. Fantastic. Which is the whole point. So it's digital control of analog. And this doesn't have to be just analog audio. This could be control volts. Okay. Or it can be trigger inputs. So you've got several things that might want to trigger um, one out, uh, or one trigger input that wants to tr trigger several trigger outputs. It's, it's a one to many system. It's not many to one. Sure. So, so your malt, you can do a buffer. It's a buffered malt if you like as well. So, now, so maybe I should do a little bit more indication. So this is the matrix view. Yeah. Which is reflects what's going on. Uh, if we go to the path view, and you can see here, I, I split the screen. So it's, this is the x 32. I'm not doing anything with that here. And this was this one here. You can see how you can program a path. This is yeah. not reflecting what's, I can't update this from what's going on in the unit, but it's a very easy way of programming what's mm. going on. So you can see stereo in going to stereo out, also going to monitor out. And mono in, if I select mono input, 
it changes everything on here. And now that's monitoring going to all outputs. Okay. And this, you've got 128 different setups. Because it's based on the same software, there's 128 setups there. And you've got 128 stores of what's go, So you can set up 128 different setups. Yeah. I don't think you need 128, but <laughs> I originally had 12 because I thought that would be enough. And people are complaining. A few more. A few they more want, yeah. We need a few more. So 100, 128, that's enough, I hope. Enough to keep you busy, yeah. yeah. Um, if I go to the snapshot section, so here's the trigger section, and each trigger you can program multiple functions on it, and they can be routed to the, any of the MIDI sources or destinations. And there you can see a se the sequence I programmed up, and here are the, here are the snapshots. So a, the snapshots are quite nice. Um, if, you, if you have a snapshot selected, it's displayed at the bottom of the screen. If you go in and change a function, like say for instance, I want to go in and I'll change something here, it will remove the snapshot. But if you now save that snapshot, it will update it to the new setting. Yeah. But if you don't want to save it, you just reselect the snapshot and it goes back to as it was. Sure. And so if you wanted to expand past the 16 by 16, can you, can you combine multiple modules? Yeah. I mean, you could, could you can put two modules in, and you can put expansion cards behind. That will give you a 32 by 32. Right. However, you can have one 16 by 16 over here doing your control vaults, another one, another 16 yeah. by 16 doing audio. Sure. Or you can mix them both. Mix in both. It, as I say, it, the, 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 mod, the controller will control up to 15 modules. Right. Um, so at the, I've actually been telling people the wrong price. I, I just checked. They're 300 pounds each. Yep. Uh, if you wanted a 32 by 32, it'll be 900 pounds because, yep. as I say, it's three times. It, you you sure. end, end up with two extra modules. All the switching is analog, which is why it will work with anything. Yeah. Um, and we hope to make a, uh, the next project will be a dual parametric equalizer. OK. And that will have bandpass high pass, low pass outputs, as well as an EQ section. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing so, that next time yeah, around. And with variable Q and variable frequency. Brilliant. Colin, thanks very much. OK. Cheers. Love you.